For those of you that are regulars of the channel, you know that we have an extensive look at different builds and even different weapons to showcase how overpowered they can be so that you can make Elden Ring one of the easiest experiences possible. And for many of you, you can probably remember a little while ago, we had a video showcasing the Glinstone Chris, and I put the question as to whether or not it is the greatest dagger in the game. Just with its unique Ash of War and high damage output, that thing was literally insane. However, you guys were very, very quick, and right so to bombard me with comments about the Rejuvia and how insane it is with all of the latest updates that have happened. I'll be honest, I haven't used the Rejuvia since my first ever playthrough way back when, so when the game first came out, and as many of you know, the game has been quite thoroughly updated and balanced since then, and with the latest update, the Rejuvia seems to have been extremely benefited with that particular update. Especially when you're wielding this weapon, uh, you can do things like this. Yes. Yeah, we're going to be having a look at how you can replicate that. I'll be showcasing that build for you so that you can also do thousands of damage against your enemies and just obliterate literally any boss that stands in your way. Obviously, just before we jump into that, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a like if you do happen to like this kind of video, it helps me out a lot and lets me know that you want to see more content like this in the future. And if you want to stick around for more videos such as this, do also hit that subscribe button. It's free and in return, you'll never miss out on a future video. So. Definitely give that a click as well, but without further ado, let's jump straight into this insane Rejuvia build. So of course, first things first, I'm sure many of you know how to get this thing already, but if you don't, you do need to head towards the Murkwater Cave, which is where Patches is residing, but just before you enter the cave, you will be invaded by an NPC. This invasion is part of Yura's questline, but essentially, once you defeat the NPC or have Yura to come in and help and defeat him for you, you will then be granted the Rejuvia. Now, this weapon you can only get one person her playthrough but if you've got a buddy that can drop in this weapon or if you go obviously into a new game plus you can then dual wield these things and I highly recommend doing that because you literally become an absolute powerhouse when doing so and once you've done that of course for the build itself I'll be throwing up these stats on screen for you it is a level 150 build and I am in new game plus just for reference of the gameplay you're seeing in the background but essentially we want to look at something around these sort of stats so 40 points into Vigor, 20 Mind, 25 Endurance, 15 Strength, 34 Dexterity, 10 Intelligence, 10 Faith, and then 75 Arcane. Basically, the criteria for this is to try and get as much Arcane and Dexterity into the build as much as possible. The 10 Intelligence and Faith are just the base stats because I'm using the Wretch build as I do for all of my videos, just because it's easier and a cleaner slate to put into whatever points I need. But I would say the 15 Strength you don't need, I would probably put the extra 5 points into Vigor or Dexterity dexterity again to help out with the damage output or the health depending on what you need more so if you want a higher damage output with the actual daggers themselves obviously put it into dexterity but if you want to survive a little bit better and obviously have more health put that into vigor instead and of course with these stats they can then also be boosted plus five by using Goldrick's Great Rune. So that's something that I would highly recommend using. And then of course, for the talismans to pair everything up with this, we are in fact gonna be running the Shard of Alexander because that greatly affects the skill power that we're using, the Blood Blade that does that wave of bleed affinity up against our enemies that heavily gets increased with the amount of damage with this talisman. I'm also running the Carrion Fig Tree Crest just to also help with the FP consumption with that skill power. Because we've got a limited amount of mine to basically put into other stats elsewhere, this helps us use the Ash of War a lot more without having to worry about putting so many points into mine, so that's useful for that. We've also then got the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. For one reason or another, I haven't actually completed Millicent's quest yet on this particular character, so if you have Millicent's Prosthesis, I would highly suggest putting that instead of this. But if you don't have that and you've got the Rotten Wing Insignia or just anything that's going to help boost your attack power with successive attacks, I highly Highly recommend that you're going to be doing a flurry of sort of seven or eight attacks in mere seconds with the daggers when you're just using the L1 or LB attacks, the quick attacks with your offhand, which can become really potent with this 
this added to the build and then of course because it's a bleed build the last talisman we're going to be running is the lord of bloods exaltation which again increases your attack power with bleed affinity being activated within the immediate area so as soon as you affect an enemy with that bleed build up you will then also have your damage output increased further with this talisman so as you can see we're running quite a powerful amount of talismans there's not really too much in terms of protection here and we're just essentially going in for the kill because this weapon can become an absolute demon when coming up against bosses but one thing that can also boost this even further and is really useful to have is just having a random dagger so i've got just a standard dagger with golden vows affinity put on it so i can also pop that before going into a fight to obviously grant myself the same boosts of having golden vow to save myself putting points into faith and running the incantation so i highly recommend that again it's been heavily suggested in the comments it's something that i overlooked because to be honest i forgot that there was also a nash of war for this thing so again thank you all to those who commented but definitely run a dagger that can use golden vow instead to save on the points that you would normally put into faith because you need 25 points and then you can obviously put them elsewhere but other than that i run a fairly sort of like middle ground armor set i've got the raging wolf armor on paired with scaled greaves and gauntlets and then lionel's helm just for the standard look that you probably see in all of my videos because that allows me to keep the medium roll active so i don't go over into the heavy equipment load but also gives me 61 poise points which is more than enough to obviously withstand most attacks without being stun locked in battle and like i say if you've then got two of the rejuvias and can dual wield them the damage output with those things is ridiculous and you can literally melt any boss especially if they're weak to bleed affinity i know radigan and the elden beast are not weak as they are immune to bleed build up but just the base attacks themselves will still be enough to deal heavy amounts of damage to them making these weapons still a viable option for the late game to help out with the wonder physic i'm also using that as sort of like a protection layer so i'm using the upper line bubble tier and the upper line hard tier just to basically boost my defense because i've got no talismans and i've got like a medium armor so if i am coming up against a tough opponent or a harder boss later in the game i've then got that layer of protection to basically help me out so i don't use as many potions or if I do get hit, especially with the bubble tier, it will then negate pretty much all of the damage, essentially giving me like a free hit, if you will. So if you are worried about having any sort of protection, obviously the Wonder Physic is brilliant for that. But if you wanted to say put the Dragon Crest Talisman in there somewhere, maybe instead of the Filig Tree Crest, you can do that. Or maybe put those points that I had in Strength into Endurance and run a heavier armor set. There are obviously a few ways that you can chop and change this build, and by all means, I do encourage it with my videos. If you've got any way to make this build better don't be afraid to hit me up in the comments and let me know what you would do instead because i'm sure there's also many people out there that will be grateful if you do have a better knowledge of the game than i do because if, believe it or not and it's pretty evident from my videos i'm not the greatest Elden ring player okay i'm sure there are ways to fine tune this and probably get another maybe 100 damage out of it somewhere along the line so yeah for those of you that know the game like the back of your hand do let us know in the comments down below how you can make this better because it'll be really intriguing to find out but essentially that is the new meta in Elden Ring the new overpowered build that you need to be using if you're not using it already like I said earlier thank you to those of you that did comment on my previous videos because like I say updates happen and there's some things that I miss out on in the game and I was obviously heavily missing out on the Rejuvia so thank you to everybody that did comment thank you for those of you that are watching the videos at the moment and subscribing to the channel there's been a large increase in the amount of people watching the short on the channel subscribing to the channel watching the main videos as well so thank you all for the recent support in the past month it's been absolutely insane we are aiming for 10,000 subscribers and we're looking to be on track to get that by the end of the year but if you want to help us out and achieve that goal even earlier like i said at the beginning make sure you hit that subscribe button down below it's free and it will keep you up to date with everything that's posted on the channel so why not give it a go we've also got starfield just around the corner i will most likely be playing it by the time that this video goes up so you can probably expect to see a couple of videos depending if it's good or bad i personally haven't looked at any reviews yet so it'll be a very much raw aspect for me playing it for the first time and if you want to see videos on starfield or anything like that obviously do let me know because it'll be interesting to see if that's something that you're interested in but essentially guys that is everything i hope you're all doing well and i hope you're having an amazing day definitely go and use this build if you haven't already because it is a blast and uh, i guess for now i will catch you in the next video
of whatever it is that we make. Bye-bye.